Today's video is brought to you by Squarespace. Now I can finally feed my family. Hey everyone, in this video, I want to show you my desktop setup as a student, as well as a YouTuber, as well as someone who's trying other things because I'm super uninteresting as a person. I wanted to show what my desktop looks like, my typical workflow, and how I spend my free time. No, not that kind of free time. I'll be cutting this video into three sections, my desktop, my taskbar, and my Chrome home page. Chrome home page. Timestamps are in the description, and yeah, let's get on with the video. Let's first start with the desktop, the first thing you see when you turn on the computer. I wanted to go for a dark theme this time because light theme was too blinding for me. So before we talk about what's on my desktop, let's first talk about how I went around styling it. Now, the thing about Windows is that it's like white bread. It's f***ing boring. Until you put some stuff on it, of course. And so I installed this app called Raymeter, which allows you to put certain widgets on your windows and desktop. Now, the suit might think, hey yo, wait a minute, doesn't that like reduce your performance of games? Like what the hell, bro? And to that I say, it doesn't really affect games that much. But even if it did, I shouldn't be playing games in the first place. I have my research paper to do. Now, the thing about Raymeter is that a lot of the widgets online are quiet. Let's just say if Matt Diavella saw those, he'd immediately barf. You know, you search up different desktop setups and inspos from Raymeter, and sometimes you find setups that look like if 2006 and skinny jeans had a baby. Of course, I'm talking about Taylor Swift. And looking at the desktop setups like these doesn't really remind you of James Dean. Not really a daydream, is it? So instead, I searched for simple widgets that had a clean design on them, I tweaked them a little bit, adjusted the size, the font of it, etc. And then after a couple of hours of fidgeting and procrastinating and not doing my work, I finally finished my desktop look. So turning on my laptop, you'll see that my desktop has a few glaring things. Which is obviously the meter on the top left. Damn, you notice it too? I downloaded some sort of PC meter widget. It essentially shows me the percentage of my CPU, RAM, how much storage I have, etc. Now, as much as I want to say that I downloaded these widgets for utility purposes, like I'm such a PC guru, like, ah, bro, like I know everything about the PC. I did it because it looked cool. Damn, I should be an engineer. For real though, I feel like these meters are pretty useful in some way and also a cool addition to my desktop. And down on the bottom left is my desktop media player. I found this really cool media player that like allows me to link my Spotify so that I know what it's playing or it shows me what I'm playing in my PC. Every time I play a song on Spotify and close the tab, I can just go to the desktop and see what song is playing. I can even press on this pause and play to play the music. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I don't know, it's really nice touch and it adds a bit of convenience. It also adds style and personality. Yeah. Now moving on to the bottom right is the recycle bin widget. I'm just saying, I'm so glad I found this because prior to finding this, it was such a hassle whenever I deleted files on my laptop. In my previous desktop setup, since I hid all the apps from my desktop, I had to manually toggle to show the recycle bin just to empty the recycle bin. You know, not to mention the fact that the icon looked uh, super uh, Microsoft. Now with this widget, not only is it cleaner looking, but it's also pretty useful. I mean, to be honest, it practically has the same function as the recycle bin. But I mean, come on, tell me that this doesn't look miles better than the original recycling bin. I'm sorry, what? No one cares. Wait, what? No one cares? No one no one cares of what the recycle bin looks like and that I'm a whiny bitch. Oh, okay. Okay, anyway, this widget is actually pretty useful. If you right click it, it will prompt you if you want to delete the files permanently. Left clicking it will actually open the recycle. God damn, it's exactly the same thing as the old one. And finally, a quick bonus question for the final bit of the desktop. Now, I don't know if you noticed a super super huge ass thingy in my laptop or desktop, but if you can guess what the super super huge ass thingy is on my desktop, then I'll give you a super super huge ass reward for guessing that super super huge ass thingy and what my desktop is. Now, if your answer is wallpaper, you'd be correct. Nice shot! And if your answer is anything else, then you're big dummy dum dum. Now, jokes aside, I intentionally put a huge ass clock in the middle. I got a basic clock widget and increased the font tenfold, which resulted in this cool looking clock widget. How many times am I gonna say clock before I slip my tongue and say something sus? Now, I see a lot of YouTubers have a giant ass clock in the middle, especially when they're studying. Now, I initially thought that every YouTuber who did this didn't know how to read time, but I found that having a giant ass clock in the middle of your screen helps sometimes. It's a great slap to the face saying, look what time it is, asshole. It also has the day as well as the date, which is pretty cool. 
Although sometimes having a giant ass clock in front of you can be a bad thing as you are constantly reminded of what time it is, which will hinder your work. Nonetheless, I like the look and I think it looks cool. I got an ace last week in Valorant, so your opinions on this clock is immediately invalid. Cancelled. Zip. Boom. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. And finally, on the top of the right of the desktop, you can see that there's nothing. Now, there isn't any widgets up there because, quite frankly, I don't know what to put up there, so I'll let you decide. Comment down below what kind of widget I should put on the top right. I promise I read every single comment. I have no life. But if you want to convince people that you have an interesting life, or if you want to have an online portfolio, or a place to post your artwork, or even a website to start your online business, well, you're going to need a beautiful website for that. And that's where Squarespace comes in, today's sponsor. Squarespace helps you create your own beautiful, sleek, and dare I say it, aesthetic website with a few simple clicks. No coding whatsoever. Take that, nerds. Whether you want to start your own online business and start selling your own products online, or if you're a blogger, or even if you're a student like me, you can make your own portfolio website and show off in your applications. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 that, that, yeah, that's my website, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so am I in? 10 grand? 10 grand? Sir, this is a McDonald's. Me and my mom have been wanting to start an online business, so Squarespace has been super useful for us. They have tons of templates to choose from, so you can choose which one that matches your aesthetic, drop your photos, add your website name, and boom. Simple as that. Not only that, you can have access to your powerful analytics to see who's visiting your site, how they interact with it, audience geography, and more. So, if you want to start a website for your online business, portfolio, personal blog, or more, then head over to squarespace.com slash kainotebook to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain using code kainotebook, all caps. Not only will you get access to their beautiful website builder, but it'll also help the channel out. My family's running out of food, and now they want to eat me. Again, that's squarespace.com slash kainotebook with the code kainotebook to save 10% off your first purchase. That being said, on with the video. Next up we have, let's talk about my taskbar. Right now I have 9 applications in the taskbar. Now before I used to have just 4, but I found myself that having the most accessed apps in the taskbar to be quite convenient and cleaner than having the tabs all open. Now, there are a few things in life that I mainly do. God damn it, not that again. I'm a student, I make videos for an online platform. Um, I don't know if you heard of YouTube, but like, <laughs> there's this really cool YouTuber that goes by the name of Kai Notebook. Like, he's really cool. You check him out and like, watch all his videos. So among those things, I mainly use apps that are used for my studies, video and photo editing, web browsing, recording audio, and listening to music while I'm dreaming that I'm playing in a concert. So in my taskbar, there are mainly 9 apps. I sort of split the taskbar into 3 parts. This first section on the left is my Spotify app. I put it away to the side since I don't want Spotify to be among my tabs. Then this clump right here is my workstation apps. Pretty much the apps I use working on video, audio, etc. Then we have sort of my study-ish section and we have my file explorer being Noah, separating these two sections. If you get it, you get it. Alright, let's talk about my apps. The first app we have is my Spotify. Now, if you don't know what Spotify is, I have every right to be concerned about you. How did you even manage to turn on your computer, Jesus Christ? <laughs> Jokes aside, I'm actually thinking of making a study playlist, so please do let me know in the comments if you guys want a study playlist. Beside the app is Audacity, I mainly use this app to record voiceovers. I found it quite easy to use as it's easy to record and add effects and all that. I mainly use this to record voiceovers, and in fact, the voiceovers you hear in my videos, and the voiceover you're hearing right now, is recorded with audacity. I mainly use audacity because I don't have the audacity to- Whatever, cut to the next app, what a fucking lame ass joke. Now beside it is Premiere Pro, quite explanatory. This is where I edit most of my videos, and as much as how ass the subscription model Adobe has at the moment, Monopoly. I found Premiere to be quite the best application in my opinion to edit videos. It was very fluid the moment I tried it, so I've been using it ever since. Still fucking crashes on me. Next is Adobe Illustrator. I mainly use this app whenever I need to illustrate something, hence Adobe Illustrator. Now, judging from the title of the application, you probably know what I do on this app. How do I continue this joke? Anytime I need to make a graphic like a profile or a picture, or something else, or if ever I need to make a thumbnail, I mainly use Adobe Illustrator to do those things. Next, we have this Ableton Live 11. Now, if you don't know what Ableton Live is, it's a DAW which stands for that as whoa, <laughs> which stands for Digital Audio Workstation. It's a software used to create music. 
I'm still learning a lot of audio mixing to making songs in general, so hopefully in the future I'm able to make my own song and you know publish it for you guys to listen to. I wanna become a musical artist, please. I'm manifesting right now. Next we have his files. This is like access to my files. What the fuck do you want me to say here? Next we have his Anki, my flashcard app. Now I haven't reviewed my flashcard in two years, so now I'm full of guilt whenever I pass this app. Just like a one night stand. Notion, you guys already probably know what it is, and if you haven't, go watch my other video about it. Trust me, it will really help you. I shared my setup and all that in that video. And finally, Chrome. Because who doesn't use Chrome? But yeah, that's pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Do check out my other videos I have done for Windows 10. Again, for my Squarespace promo, enter the code KINOPOOK in the description below to save 10% off your Squarespace purchase in building your website. Just for an update and a follow-up of my last video, I'll be actually leaving in around two months. So yeah, I'm gonna be preparing for that, but still don't be too excited yet. It's only two months. It's still around two months before I fly back, but yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Give it a like if you liked it, and please comment down below to help with the algorithm. But anyway, that being said, I'll see you in another video. Bye!